Hello, my well-being buddies. I've been asked to do this session on autism. So my name's Steve. I'm the mental health nurse. Now, I did see a lot of patients when I was in practice uh, with autism or suspected autism. And it is, again, very much a neurodivergency on the increase based on awareness and obviously the impact this has on people's lives. So according to the Centre of Disease, approximately one in 54 children have autism. So you're looking at a ratio, uh, more diagnosis in boys than girls with male to female ratios of four to one. So the prevalence of ASD, uh, autistic spectrum disorder, is on the increase. And it's fair to say it is a spectrum. spectrum. Um, so therefore, you know, you can live fulfilled lives and, and live normal lives with autism. This isn't necessarily a bad thing here. Uh, ASD is typically diagnosed in early years, normally around the age of two to three. Um, however, I'm aware it is a lot later uh, re in recent years due to pandemic and everything else that's going on. Really, early intervention can uh, improve better outcomes for children. So it is definitely the case that the sooner you get diagnosed, the better it is. So what, what is autism? Well, autistic people may act in different ways to other people. So autistic people may find it hard to, to communicate and interact with people. They may find it hard to understand how other people think or feel. So there's some emotional deregulation or misregulation problems there. They find things like bright lights or loud sounds, overwhelming, stressful and uncomfortable. Again, not everybody, but some. There generally is a thing around anxiety, getting upset around unfamiliar situations. There's constant need to plan and know what's going on and get it into routines. It can take longer for them to process information. So that's that piece around the working memory, the, the left cortex for, for getting all that, that memory in there and remembering things. And they can do the same things over and over again. So it's that kind of parrot fashion way of doing things. Now, autism is not an illness. Being autistic does not mean you have an illness or a disease. It means your brain just works a different way. And it's, some, it's sometimes you're born with this and signs of autism might be noticed when you're very young um, or not until you're a bit older in life. And that's what I've definitely seen in practice. Uh, I've, I've spoken to younger people and much older people. Uh, again, there is no medical cure or treatment as such for autism, but there are things that we can do to alleviate the symptoms um, and to ensure autistic people can live fulfilled lives. So being autistic does not need to stop you living a good life. Like everyone, autistic people have things that are good as well as things that they're gonna struggle with. So being autistic means that it doesn't mean, sorry, that you can't make friends, relationships or even have a job. And I've seen a lot of successful people uh, manage their world and navigate the world with autism. Some people use other names for autism. So, again, you've already heard me call it ASD. So that's the uh, sorry, autism spectrum disorder. Um, but the medical name is actually autism. Asperger's or Asperger's syndrome is used for people to describe autistic people with average or above average intellect. OK, so what are the causes? Well, nobody really knows what the causes are. It can affect the same people in the family. So there is a bit of genetics here. Autism is not caused by bad parenting. It is not caused by vaccinations. It is not caused by diets and or an infection. So they, we know it's not caused by any of those things. Autistic people can have any level of intelligence. This has got nothing to do with intellect. It's got nothing to do with uh, the way that we, um, our intelligence levels, just it, it's not related. Autistic people can have other conditions. So therefore making it a bit more complex. So they can have ADHD, dyslexia, anxiety, depression, and epilepsy. So again, normal neurological conditions there around autism. So the reality is, how is it assessed? And what are the signs that we need to look for? So we'll do signs in children 
first. So in young children, they may not respond to their names. They may avoid eye contact. They may not smile when you're smiling at them. So they're not mirroring you. They may be getting very upset. Uh, they don't like certain tastes. They don't like certain sounds and they don't like certain smells. They may do repetitive movements such as flapping their hands, kicking their fingers and rocking their bodies. Um, and my little two year old, well, two and a half year old now, he uh, does a lot of that and he does a lot of this and he will walk around and around in circles. He doesn't interact with any children yet because he's nonverbal. Uh, but again, when he has his things, it's a very simple thing and he will hold that one item and he's engrossed with that one item for a very long time. And they repeat the same thing over and over again. So that's signs in a younger child. Signs in an older child then would be things such as the child just isn't seeming to understand what other people are thinking and feeling. So they can't read the cues on your face. They can't read if you're cross or happy or upset. Usual speech, so again, repeating words and phrases so they're comfortable with their linguistics and language skills. Um, they like strict daily routine to get very upset with change. Having a very keen interest in certain objects or certain hobbies, and generally they go all in on it. You know, they become absolute experts. Uh, and the one thing that I definitely know, if someone with autism tells you something and it's their hobby, they're gonna be right. They can get upset uh, quite quickly. So again, that emotional regulation bit. They find it hard to make friends because again, it's that perception of the world and reality around them. And it's just slightly off center. Uh, they're talking, uh, when they talk, it's very literal in their sense. So we avoid phrases like break a leg because they would truly believe that you mean break a leg. Uh, and they find it hard to say how they feel. So this, it's that, emotional regulation piece. So autism in boys and girls, again, can sometimes differ. So autistic girls hide some signs of autism by coping, um, by sorry, copying how other children work and play. And actually girls do that with ASD as well. So it's not, um, sorry, not ASD, with ADHD. So it's not uncommon that they do this mirroring and this masking. Again, girls can generally be withdrawn from situations. They appear to cope better in social, social situations and they tend to have less signs. So what to do then and where to get advice from. So if your child is under the age of five, you can go to your GP. You should still have access to a health visitor for under the age of five years old. Any other health professional that sees your child, such as a doctor, therapist, and at school, you need to ask for the SENCO uh, to manage that education around uh, that piece of work. Equally, between five and teenage years, you're gonna be looking at CAMS referral, child adolescent mental health services. And again, we know that's gonna be a bit of a wait um, and, and that's where we're looking there. Um, now in adults, we look at some different signs and symptoms. And here we're looking at it kind of being hard to fit in to the world around you about thinking and feeling, getting very anxious in social situations, finding it hard to make friends, especially on their own. Sometimes they can see blunt, rude, direct to the point. Um, and again, it's about that articulation about how they're feeling and what they're thinking. They find it hard to say what they feel. And that again, they can say things very literally uh, and routine is important. There are some other signs around autism here. So again, not understanding social rules, avoid eye contact. They don't like getting too close with people. They can become upset if you touch them or get too close. Um, they notice the small details and, and kind of small sounds around them. They have very keen interest in subjects and activities such as computing and coding and things like that. Uh, and again, they like to plan things very carefully. In women and men, again, autistic women may have learned to hide things. Again, that's that mirroring, fitting in and coping. They can hide their feelings, appear to cope better and show fewer signs of that repetitive behaviour. Again, based on this mirroring. So if you're an adult, you think you've got autism, 
You can do an autism scale questionnaire online. Um, and that autism questionnaire uh, will help you identify your level. And I'm just Googling that because I, I want to make sure I give you the right uh, one. And it is the yeah AQ10 questionnaire for autism. Um, and if you do the AQ10 questionnaire, you can download that, give that to your doctor. Again, go to those signs and symptoms and say, look, these are the signs and symptoms that I think I've got. And then hopefully that will help. Now, obviously, the risk factors here are they're unable to read social cues. So it puts them in a very vulnerable situation. They're not able to read things too terribly well. Or alternatively, they say things literally. So that can then cause a lot of problems. Um, equally, there's that piece around depression, anxiety, and signs of um, other things there to, to think about. So how is it assessed? Uh, normally through um, adult treatment services or through CAMS and they would do the pre-screening, the health questionnaires, they would look at how it affects and impacts your daily social life and education. Uh, for children they're assessed through play so there's lots of toys and interactions and there are clinical tools online um, and there's like the ADOS score I want to say it's an ADOS score uh, but if you want to know more, you can Google that and um, look at clinical Pearson's to uh, clinical assessment tools, sorry, for autism. And you can see the kind of assessments that they go through. So natural treatment for autism really looks at positive behavior support models of parenting. So for children, it's all about reinforcement of positive behavior not punishing the child because punishments don't work. And actually it just reinforces this, this negative approach. Looking at solid foundation routines, breaking things down so it's in bite-sized chunks, going at the speed in which they understand, exercise, a good diet, and again, just making sure that you've got that additional support through Senko, and through social services if you need that. Equally, if you need to do a disability claim, making sure that you're getting the right resources there to support autism, um, because you may be entitled to benefits as well from the, the council uh, or the government, sorry. So making sure that you're claiming for what you're entitled to to help manage uh, a child with autism or global delay. Again, looking at medication um, for this, it's rare that I've seen medication given because, again, a lot of the medication, there's, there's nothing technically wrong with the child. So the medication that's normally given will be around some of the behaviours. So it might be sleep issues. It might be anxiety or mood. And that's what's kind of managed. Again, same for adults. A lot of the stuff around autism is about managing the symptoms and that everyday piece, everyday um, stuff there. So if we look at some of the do's and don'ts then here, um, you know, when you go to the doctor, obviously ask about treatment, what might help, what might not help. If you are prescribed medication, make sure you ask for possible side effects. Um, tell your doctor if you think medication isn't working, because again, not all medication will work properly. Again, ask for regular medications reviews because this is a neurodivergent, things may change. Again, what I've seen in the past with autism is that sometimes they have a problem swallowing the tablets. So it may be the case that you're asking for liquid versions of stuff. So useful tips for medical appointments as well. Ask for the appointment at the start or at the end of the day, because obviously the waiting rooms are gonna be a bit quieter. So that overload and that overcrowding can be quite difficult to manage. Ask for a double appointment, because if you have an autistic child or if you have autism, you do not want to be rushed. So therefore just ask for a double appointment. Just say, I've got autism, I need a double appointment. Arrange a visit before your appointment, know where you're going so you're less anxious on the day and you're feeling more in control. 
take somebody with you on the day. So somebody that can help. So if you do get over anxious, you've got somebody there to help and support you. And when you arrive at the surgeries or if you arrive at your appointment, always ask the receptionist for a quieter area if that's possible. Do not worry about letting staff know that you have autism because, again, um, it, it is a common neurological uh, or a common uh, neurodivergent condition. So treatments that are not recommended for autism. So autism is where the brain develops differently uh, to non-autistic people. It is not an illness, so therefore there is no cure. If you are autistic, your local GP or your local autism team may suggest approaches that can help you. So this is all around development. This is all around life skills. So this may be developing daily living skills, developing better communication skills. So you might need a referral to speech and language. Uh, the manage of other physical or mental health conditions such as pain or anxiety. So that's not triggering you. And then manage, managing that harmful behavior. So again, look at my video around anger and look at how we can control and apply the brakes to anger. And there's five things that we can do. We can do mindfulness, we can do meditation, we can do exercise, we can do breathing, or we can do distraction skills. So just learning those skills to keep that anger nice and under control. But there are also treatments and approaches that are not recommended because they're either fake, there's no evidence, or it's just not gonna work to, to manage that. So again, making sure that whatever you're doing, it's evidence-based because there are a lot of people out there and there are a lot of things that can actually be more harmful if you go down that road. So things that can be harmful, unlicensed injections into blood cells, um, bleaching, um, some vitamins and minerals can cause problems. Again, raw camel's milk, none of these will treat autism. So please make sure that if you are trying to support somebody that you are using evidence-based approaches. How to support, sorry, how to support or spot fake treatments? Well, dare I say, if anyone says it's a miracle, if anyone says it's faith, if anyone just says trust, my advice, steer well clear. Because at the end of the day, you do not want to make this worse. Equally, you want to make sure whoever supports you with autism is trained and qualified because you do not want to make the symptoms worse. So making sure that somebody is a mental health professional, making sure that they're on the license and register and making sure that they understand the importance of this. Equally, uh, if you do support if you do spot anything that's fake because autism is on the ride, there's a lot of cowboys out there. Just make sure that you report those uh, to the local authorities and that could be the Sisters Advice Bureau or et cetera. So other treatment that's not recommended. Uh, and again, this comes from the National Institute of Care of Excellence. So we they would only recommend that it's good or beneficial is um, neurofeedback for speech and language therapy problems, trying to change the brain's activity auditory integrated training for speech and problems because that doesn't work, omega-3 fatty acids for sleep problems. Um, so again, there are some things there that you just want to avoid. And you can find further information about that on the NHS website. So there's lots of things to think about. So just now moving on to the family. If you have an autistic, sorry, if you have an autistic child or you have an autistic partner, it can be, um, it can be quite emotional. It can be very, it can be a, quite a strain, and and that's not in a derogatory way at all. It's just sometimes it can get exhausting and it can be stressful. So it's important that if you are looking after somebody that has autism, or you're supporting somebody, or you're living with somebody, it's there's things that you can do to help. One is to understand autism, because if you understand autism and you can enter their world, you are going to end up being less stressed. So to enter their world, understand what's going on. Make sure that you've got friends and family that you can talk to on the day to day. Just let off some of that steam, let some of it out so you can be more emotionally well balanced. 
get advice from other parents, join support groups, join network groups, because the more you do, the more you can share people's stories and understand how people cope and, and deal with things. You could ask your local authority for a care assessment. Now, anyone has the right. You don't need a referral from your GP. Again, another misunderstanding. Anyone can go to their local authority and ask for a Care Act assessment. And in the Care Act assessment, this is down to what social services can provide to you to help manage things. Uh, and that could be finances, that could be a PA, that could be adaptations or whatever it may be. Think about doing a course for parents with autistic children. So there are early bird courses from the National Autistic Society. And those courses will teach you how to manage autism. And the more you manage it, the more you understand it, the less stress, the less anxious you're going to get about it. Uh, do not feel guilty about taking time for yourself. It's really important that you self care. It's equally important to talk to your child about autism. You know, it's your choice when you do this, but it's important that you do talk to them. And when you tell your child, it may help to do this, you know, make sure that you're feeling calm and relaxed. Make sure you're in a comfortable place with no distractions. Explain to them that they do not have an illness. That's really important. And, um, just say they might need extra help or support with the things that they do. And that support will be provided through SENCO, through school, through that Care Act assessment that we've just talked about, or through that referral of the GP, or all three. Explain they might need, or sorry, explain they might find things harder. And, and that's just that processing piece. But again, once they've got it, they'll understand it. And bring them and take them to support groups so they can see other autistic children. And I think that's really important for that sense of norm, that sense of fitting in, that sense of identity and belonging. So how can you support other children? So some children can find it hard, such as brothers and sisters, uh, if they're autistic. And here, you need to make time with them whenever you can to do activities with just them. Talk to them about what's going on, get them to ask questions so they don't worry. Let them have the time on their own with their friends, for example, sleepovers at friends' houses and check advice from SIBS. And that's a charity for siblings of disabled children. So if you are a sibling of, a, of your brother or sister who's got autism, there are there is an organisation there that provides additional advice and support. Again, don't be afraid to involve them in things such as meeting with healthcare professionals. The more you involve them, the more they will understand. So on the NHS website, there are lots of resources there. You can find out more through the National Autistic Society for Family Relationships, the National Autistic Society to support for carers in England, and there's um, uh, the Parents Toolkit from the Autism Society as well. So there's lots of resources online to help manage this. So let's go back. So autism, a neurodivergent condition. Causes, again, it is unknown, can be genetics, um, and again, that predisposition birthing. Risk factors, poor risk taking, unable to understand risk and consequences, and therefore can put themselves in danger. So be mindful of that. Signs and symptoms of autism, it's that piece around routine, poor emotional regulation. It could be repetitive words. It could be uh, looking at lights, just hooking in on one sub. Sorry, hooking in on one subject. So lots of things there to look out for. How it's assessed? It's the AQ10. You can download that and then just go through that. And again, you can self-score yourself. Um, and then ask for that referral piece. The ways of treating this, all to do with education. The more you know, the more you can treat it, the more support there is. And look at those parenting programmes because it can be really hard to manage an autistic child. Um, enter their world, understand what they're thinking, understand what they're feeling, and that will reduce the anxiety. Again, from a medication point, be mindful what you're giving your child because you can end up with that neurofeedback and all that other stuff 
uh, which we just discussed. So be mindful about what you're giving. If something is prescribed, it will probably be prescribed more for the symptoms rather than autism, because again, autism is not an illness. So I hope you found that useful as a helicopter tour around autism. My name's Steve and I'm the mental health nurse. Thanks for watching.